It's the journey of a lifetime. The great generational migration has tens of thousands of older Australians hitting the road, not only to escape the southern winter, but to embark on a spiritual journey to the centre of Australia and far beyond. Didn't the treasurer say you've got to work till you drop? Yes. Well, we've dropped. <laughs> well, we've dropped on this beach. <laughs> Your family and friends down south, what will they be doing? Working. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing. Now, in the cold cities down south, there are a lot of younger people who are saying this generation of retired Australians are a bit selfish. They're just into enjoying themselves. Oh, Isn't right. that a fact? <laughs> Isn't that a fact? Why shouldn't we enjoy ourselves? We are answerable to nobody. We don't have to turn up at any particular time. We don't have to wear a tie or a suit. We don't have to toe the line for anybody at any time. We call all the shots. Australians aged 55 and older are at the forefront of the rediscovering of this country. And they've created a national tourism group, spending more than $10 billion a year on their travels. There are more than 325,000 caravans, motorhomes and camper trailers currently registered. And at any one time, up to 80,000 of them are on what's known as the big lap around Australia. Out on the road you find them everywhere, from Kosciuszko to Kakadu, from Broome to Cape York. But there's one place that's on the very top of all of their wish lists, and that's out here in the red dust of central Australia in the slanting afternoon light just before the sun sets in the morning. Almost sunset. It's quarter to six now. This is like a religious observation. It is, it? it is, and you sit and watch, and every time you look at the rock, it's, the colour has changed just slightly. If you turn away for five minutes and have a talk with someone and look back, yeah. it's a different colour. It it's really is amazing, you know. Brisbane nomads, Fred and yeah, Kath Dyer, are three and a half months into an odyssey right that could last yeah. three years or even a it. lifetime. Yeah, but How no. long do you think you could stay out there? Out there? On the road. Oh, well, indefinitely, I think, well, I think almost indefinitely, really. really? Mm. Yeah. There's not much that we haven't got with us anyway. We travel pretty well and pretty comfortably, and so there's really nothing we haven't got. At Queensland's Caravan and Camping Expo, the largest of its kind in Australia, you soon realise what a massive industry going bush has become, much more than a swag and a terry toweling hat. A new caravan is manufactured every 14 minutes and the choice is mind-boggling from here. decadent luxury to fair dinkum camping. They're very easy to set up. We can go from this mode here, what we call our track mode, to something like this, four or five minutes, one person. Go! Three minutes, All and right. not even a sweat. Oh, Troy, this is more like it, mate. It's this space. Much more like <laughs> it. In fact, a ridiculous amount of space. Yes. I had been looking around about the twenty-two, twenty-three thousand dollars mark. What's this? This runs something like this on the road, seven hundred and fifty. This isn't so much getting away from it all as taking it all with you. The new Swagmaster comes with washing machine, fridge, ensuite, air conditioning and a 350 turbocharged diesel to pull the lot. How many have you sold? Uh, well, this is, um, we've got over 4,000 vehicles on the road over a 22 year history. 4,000? Do you think I'd have run into one of them by now? Yeah, Australia's like a Bermuda Triangle. They all sort of disappear when they leave the shed, so... <laughs> <laughs> if 4.1 million people decide to go caravanning and camping, then stand back, the industry just explodes. And that is precisely what I think will happen over the next decade. 
Australia's leading demographer, Bernard Salt, has been counting them out. He knows a population trend when he sees one and predicts we're only at the beginning of a nomadic explosion. The baby boomer generation, born between 1946 and 1961, are now hitting their 50s and in vast numbers are looking for a sea change or a lifestyle shift. Adventurers, discoverers, uh, people seeking an experience, if you like. This is the redefinition of the 50-something time in life by the boomers. You've worked hard for so long, so many years, been tied down to timetables, and all of a sudden you just say, that's it, we, mm. we don't have to anymore, and so we're not. <laughs> For Russell and Hedy McAleese, the decision to follow their migratory urge was spurred by the realisation that time was running out when a good friend was stricken with cancer. It was one of the things that uh, really hit home to me. You're only on, the, on the, the planet for a short time. And there's things that we wanted to do that we hadn't done. I mean, I've been running a, a business since I was 22 years of age. So they hit the road and they're not coming back. Doing what we're doing, um, it's been just absolutely fantastic for um, our relationship. I mean, we've been married 33 years this year. So it is romantic. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's why you don't want to be thought of as a grey no <laughs> <laughs> True. Because you're a hunter and a lover. Yes. <laughs> Well, grey nomads is a term that has evolved from somewhere over the last 10 or 15 years, and it's a term that will not be countenanced by the baby boomer generation. It's a downbeat, daggy term. Grey nomads are out. It does sort of put you in the done rootin category. Uh, pardon the expression, but it really does sort of, to me, it does sort of put you in that. And, I've, <laughs> and I, I feel that uh, that sort of comes about quickly enough in life without... Uh, <laughs> without really sort of promoting it, you know? Who wants to sort of put the flag up and say, hey, this is us. It's here being under We're all sensitive. done. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart and Judy Mann call themselves sunbirders. They've rented out their house and for the past three years have been full-time following the sun. Home for the Manns and their dogs is the car, the caravan and the empty horizon. And it's, it's hard to explain. Once you get going, it just grows and grows and it just gets better. It's the closest thing to freedom that you ever get. The feeling of, of no stress and you haven't got all the wankers in the world that I've had to deal with in business all my life. It, it, suddenly you're cut free. There is a place you might want to go Where you can see nothing but blue skies Broom, in the top end of Western Australia, is the nation's grey nomad capital. The last national census, there were more people living in caravans here than anywhere else in the country. It's the magic. And everywhere you look, you see modern sundowners like the Tucks spending the kids' inheritance and enjoying the Indian Ocean sunset. Is it a totally irresponsible and carefree life? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just told my children that uh, we can't take our money with us when we go, but we can leave our debts behind. <laughs> That's a typical selfish, older Australian attitude. Yes! <laughs> the Kimberley is possibly the last frontier of tourism in Australia, but travelling around this last week, I found it was like this everywhere. All over the country, the new pioneers were reclaiming regional Australia and reshaping it, sometimes in surprising ways. So we're doing a, a little, uh, little trip down this rough red byway because I'm following a rumour. I've heard that down here, somewhere out there where the red earth meets the Indian Ocean, there's a grey nomad camp and, unbelievably, they have built there a bowling green. Whenever you feel kind of blue, there is a place you might want to go. 
Quite frankly, I was bowled over by this little place called Barn Hill. Those who love and cherish this remote spot want to keep it a secret, but with so many of them on the road now, secrets are harder to keep. I think people are inclined to stay at home more now, and they're travelling around Australia far more than what they used to, because they used to go overseas. So I think we see far more new ricks come in here than we ever saw before. Well, that's right. Did the, yeah. the baby boomers have cashed in their separate Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think they're not. staying close to home now. They feel safer to travel around Australia. And some have sold their houses, of course. Oh, oh yeah. Some do. Yeah. From Mick and Ann Schilling's million dollar clifftop view to Len and Tess Clark fishing on the beach. And from the ladies yeah. knitting in Dot's Corner. To the gentle action on the Bolton Road. Barn Hill is like a 21st century commune, a friendly pit stop for travellers on a journey that will only end when they do. Sitting out in the boat out there, they may have a better chance today, but um, you never know. Well, it's all about the time of day and the tide, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes, and this tomorrow too. There's always, there's always tomorrow. There's tomorrow. There's come back again. Isn't that wonderful? Yep. It's a way to be, isn't it? Clear conscience and live for tomorrow and today. You've got, you've got me. So when, when people say to you, this is selfish, this is typical me generation, this is opting out and doing your own thing. I say, yes, that's us. We're doing it. We're on the road. Boy, and I'll tell you what we're going to say there. We're staying right there for as long as we can, just heading into the sunset. That's it, Charlie. Hey.